Welcome back to my mom's basement, ladies and gentlemen. It is Robbie Fox, and I am here with one of my favorite current wrestlers on the NXT roster. One of my favorite current wrestlers in the world, I would say, Kyle. Stop. I've been following your career a very long time. I was at Final Battle 2013. I was at Final Battle 2016, where you actually took on Adam Cole, which is very timely for this interview. And your Battle of Los Angeles win is still my all-time favorite as far as PWG goes. So this is very cool to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. Oh, wow, man. What a, what a blast from the past. Uh, that's so cool. Thank you for saying that, man. You, you've been there for a lot of my um, biggest moments. So uh, really cool to chat with you today. And one of those big moments, as I mentioned, was Final Battle 2016 against Adam Cole. You have a match coming up against Adam Cole July 6th. It's going to be on NXT. You've wrestled him so many times now. What's the secret to keeping it fresh? I feel like I speak for many when I say we never get tired of seeing it. So this is just about proving who the better in-ring competitor is. Um, so, you know, our last match was unsanctioned. There was no rules. Throw everything out the window. Now, you know, we have to play within a certain rule set. And um, I don't think any of us will stray from that because if we beat each other by breaking the rules and what did we really prove? So this is just about proving who the better wrestler, who the better technician is and uh, looking forward to the great American bash. Do you enjoy being put in that rule set or do you enjoy the unsanctioned style, almost the final battle 2016 style where you could go balls to the walls and just throw everything at the crowd? Uh, for me, I think I'm better suited in a, a traditional pro wrestling sort of environment. Um, I think my style suits that well. Um, I've had most of my success under those rules. Uh, but that said, it's, it's cool and fun to be able, you know, to, to do that unsanctioned match, to do those crazy, gritty, violent matches, uh, because it's just, it's, it's different. And it, it, it's a cool opportunity to show your versatility as, as a performer, when you get to, to think outside the box and, and do a different type of a match, whether it's, you know, a ladder match, uh, a tables match, unsanctioned match, whatever that may be. Um, it, it's, it's fun and a rare opportunity just to do something different. But I think uh, uh, I'm better suited as a traditional wrestler. Well, speaking of your style, I would love to talk about the origins of that. You have a very martial arts influence in your style. Your striking is different than we see from a lot of wrestlers. It's just very unique. Did you have that in your mindset? Like, how early did you have that in your mindset that you wanted to incorporate that into your moveset as a wrestler? Well, it's interesting that, you know, I, I can watch, or if I were to go back and watch a lot of my early matches, um, it was a lot more traditional pro wrestling in terms of offense and defense, but um, I would try to do things that were martial arts influence, martial arts influence, whether that's an arm bar or a roundhouse kick. But at that point, I didn't actually train. So watching it, it looks a little off. Like it didn't have the snap or the actual correct footwork or the actual correct mechanics and, and leverage to perform the technique properly. So once I started training, I noticed these things were translating a lot better into my pro wrestling and, and my timing got better. My footwork got better. My in-ring cardio increased uh, through this. And then I noticed, okay, there's some real changes happening in my pro wrestling through, through training jujitsu and through training Muay Thai and kickboxing. Uh, so, okay. I was like, this is working for me. So I think that's important to remember that, you know, if you're going to do something like that, you need to put in the reps in the gym. You need to put in the time to, to do these things correctly. And I, I think that's why it does work for me because I, I was pro, a pro wrestler and then I did martial arts. And I think that only increased my pro wrestling. I didn't necessarily come from martial arts and then try to do pro wrestling and then have these kind of bad habits built yeah. in where I was already had the pro wrestling mindset. So I think that was beneficial for just for me personally as an individual. I think that's, that's why I've had success with it. Are you still training jujitsu? You are, right? I am. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things to do. One of my favorite hobbies. Uh, I train pretty regularly, um, which is difficult in this line of work, but uh, yeah, it's, it's the, my favorite way to supplement my training. And I think it translates well in terms of preparing me for the ring, because I know if I'm deep in a jujitsu round and I'm getting smashed by a big dude and I'm so tired, I know 
nothing is going to suck as much as that. So when I'm in a pro wrestling match and I'm getting beat up and I'm tired, I know like I've been here before I can get through this. <laughs> I trained very, very briefly. And just the feeling of having someone that's like a hundred pounds heavier than you lay on top of you with the yeah. knees on where you're just like, there's nothing I could do to move out of this position right now. So I'm just stuck here for as long as he wants me to be stuck here. I'm stuck here. That's the worst. It's a labor of love, but, um, that's where, you know, technique conquers all, man. You should get back into it and stick with it because eventually once you figure things out, you'll be able to sweep that big guy and then you'll be smashing him. You'll feel like you're 200 pounds heavier than him. So it's <laughs> in the time, but yeah, it definitely sucks in those beginning stages. We've all been there and I still get smashed a lot. It's just the nature of the beast and it's just going to make me better. Keeps you humble, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, do you have a favorite match from your past that you've had with Adam Cole? I'm sure that's a cliche question that you've been asked before, but because you have this match coming up with him, I was just curious. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, man, we've had so many over the years that have been special for their, their own unique ways. Um, does it have to be a singles match against each other? No, I mean, you could pick yeah, a tag match, one of the ones where you guys were together. Yeah. There was a, a special one um, early on. Uh, a tag match it was our first uh, match in New York City at the Manhattan Center famous venue it was our first match on iPay-Per-View for Ring of Honor and we were the opening match in a tag team match against the All Night Express and uh, it was a big moment for us it was like a, kind of a coming out party for Future Shock the tag team and uh, that match you know gave us a lot of confidence uh, moving forward and we've had so many big moments together you know yeah. Uh, it's hard to pinpoint one, but uh, that's one off the top of my head. I could say as far as singles matches against each other, man, they, they've all just been different and, and brutal and uh, you know, for their own unique ways, just, so I feel like they've evolved a lot from when we first started, but there was one, I think one, one of the final battles we wrestled, not, not 2016, maybe the one before that, I think we wrestled in 2015. That, that was a, I remember that being a good one at the ECW arena. There was that. There was the one where I think it was in New York as well, where I think Adam Cole always talks about, you know, the blood like spewing out of his mouth. Like How that's a classic that as one? well. Yeah. How can I forget that? I'm going to say when I punched his mouth loose and <laughs> where my favorite memory now. <laughs> <laughs> so I just looked up before we started the interview, the main events of former Great American Bashes. The first ever Great American Bash main event was Tully Blanchard versus Dusty Rhodes in a steel cage match. That was all also July 6th, 1985. And wow. then the first ever WWE Great American Bash match, I just had to read this to you because it made me laugh when I read it, was The Undertaker versus the Dudley Boys in a handicap concrete crypt match. That was the what main differences match. there. Yeah. Wow. Handicap match. That's so crazy. Yeah. What a, what a testament to how this sport is always evolving and changing and going through different cycles and eras. You go from that match. Uh, in 2004 to in 2021 it's Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly in a, a straight up match it's it's pretty cool and, and humbling to be part of such a, a historic event and that's what's it's cool seeing NXT bring back all these classic themed pay-per-views it's it's really cool to be a part of you know a great American bash or or an in your house or how in your house is awesome yeah yeah I love it on your Mount, I know you're Canadian, so I shouldn't say Mount Rushmore, but on your Mount Rushmore of wrestlers, who would you put on that list? Your favorites, not like, you know, the greatest of all time per se, but just your specific favorites. Oh man, that's really, really tough. Uh, so I need four, right? Yeah, four. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Not, four. not like from historical standpoint of who I think should be on the Mount Rushmore. My no, not favorite? at all. Okay, well, Stone Cold Steve Austin, of course. Um, he's, you know, a guy that made me a super fan and was like, I, this is something I have to do just during the attitude era was the coolest thing ever. Um, I'll say Hulk Hogan, just because he's iconic and he's probably my first memory associated with wrestling. Uh, I remember going to like a video store when I was like a toddler probably. And there was this poster of Hulk Hogan ripping the shirt. And I was like, what is that? That is what? And then seeing him wrestle for the first time, that memory is ingrained in my head. 
So Do you I'll remember see. what WrestleMania it was or what match it was? No, I, I don't. I just remember seeing him and being like, who is this? This guy is so cool. And you say, you know, I'm Canadian, but he was like the all-American guy with the flag. And I was like, yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it didn't matter to you know, a little kid like that. Um, I'm going to say Kenta Kobashi because he's one of my favorite Japanese wrestlers and a guy whose matches I've studied countless times because he's, he's one of the, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but he's one I of am, the, yeah. He's one of the greats. Um, Kenta and Joe in Ring of Honor, such a classic. You can't oh be an independent God. wrestling fan without like hailing that as you know an all-time great. You can't beat that. And then um, from from a standpoint of a guy who really captured my imagination and just made me in awe of the theatrics and the presentation of what we do would be The Undertaker. Just because as a kid growing up and seeing, you know, the fire and the lightning and just the character it was just so hypnotizing and um he's a guy that also really captured my imagination as a kid and made me think man this wrestling thing is just the, the coolest uh, so yeah i'll go stone cold hulk hogan kenta kobashi the Undertaker. <laughs> that's, a, that's a survivor series team i would love to see <laughs> it's pretty cool that you named the undertaker and i just said the undertaker was a the first ever wwe great american bash main eventer and here you are main eventing nxt great american bash that's i mean full circle for you right there you yeah. also have obviously an nxt triple h and Shawn michaels as two mentors to coaches what is that like dissecting wrestling with those two brains are they very different are they very similar in how they think about wrestling what's that just what's the experience like i'll have to say if mount rushmore had six guys up there i'd probably <laughs> michaels and triple h because they are so instrumental in what we do and so hands-on with everything that we do like they have a real stock in this thing obviously but they really do genuinely care and have our best interest at heart i can't tell you how many times where just even in the background just kind of observing the production process and how the thought that goes into certain ideas and you know whether that's a finish or an entrance for somebody just their mindset is so different and unique that it's really the true geniuses and have like you know you hear oh this guy's got a mind for the business you hear that all the time but like these guys really really do and it's i mean awesome times when i when i see how their mind works and um to, to be surrounded by by them and to go for that to them for advice or suggestions i mean it's just unreal that, I, that i'm in this position to where i can go to sean michaels and ask him what he thinks about a match like come on that's that's so thrilled and so lucky to to be around these guys and uh, I could their passion is unbridled and they, they care so much about making NXT what it is this special unique place where we're people are passionate about it and and it works because I, I care about NXT and it's through their passion this is a show called my mom's basement we do talk about a lot of nerdy geeky things your opponent Adam Cole is very into video games he streams on twitch and stuff what would you consider yourself nerdy or geeky about? Man, I've always really loved, been into like the paranormal, you know, oh, yeah? Asquatch, uh, UFOs or UAPs, whatever you want to say. Hell yeah. That's stuff that I've, I've always been really interested in. And uh, like cryptids, cryptids, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just we, that we have one from New Jersey where I'm from. Did you know about the Jersey Devil? Oh. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, you're yeah. real into it. Okay. Okay. You're with it. <laughs> yeah. That stuff's fun. Do you watch like the ghost hunter shows and stuff? No. <laughs> ghost hunter stuff. I'm watching the Skinwalker Ranch one that's out now is, is pretty fun. Uh, is that a uh, show or documentary? What's that? A history sort of documentary. And they, they're researching this Skinwalker Ranch where all these UFOs show up and weird cryptid sightings. I don't know. I'm getting now. I'm just really showing my hand. But I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, currently reading uh neil gaiman's the sandman series and yes. it is phenomenal like the storytelling is so heavy and so deep and thought out and it's really blowing my mind i'm really into comic books and and you know not necessarily superheroes i love superheroes but just like the, the medium of, of comic books used to, to tell a story is so cool graphic novels and this that and the other and novels in general um i really love fictional narratives things like that we're all geeky in our own ways right 
dude, you are going to get so much respect for that Sandman poll from the listeners. They're oh, going to yeah. love that. They're going to absolutely love I mean, that's a classic. Oh, that's a Neil class. Gaiman is, yeah. you know, a, a nerd god, basically, at this point. And the way that he used storytelling in that, like you said, it's, it's so different than what you would expect when you open a, up a comic book or a graphic novel. It's so serious and it's so de like dense of storytelling and complex it's a fantastic it series. it's fantastic yeah. and, and they're uh, doing it as a show soon i think i, heard, I, I can't yeah. wait uh it's going to be amazing um another one similar to the whole you know paranormal thing is i don't know if you, you're familiar with grant morrison's the invisibles so i'm familiar with grant morrison i'm not familiar with the invisibles the invisibles is is really cool uh you should check that out it's kind of like you know these sort of underground sort of superheroes but like they're you know they're going against like these archons and like the underground bases of aliens stuff like that like it's just it's kind of all the cool fun things that we were just talking about but in you know a storytelling comic book so the invisibles is pretty sweet too you should check it out I'm definitely going to give that a look because I love Grant Morrison's Batman run. He has oh, such good Batman stuff. So like, I, basically, if he slaps his name on something, it's a seal of approval from it's me. All, he wrote it all, so you should check it out. I will. Kyle, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Everyone, make sure you check out NXT Great American Bash this Tuesday, July 6th at 8 p.m. on USA Network. This is going to be on USA, so really, you have no excuse not to watch it. This is no watch TV. You have to watch it. <laughs> Kyle, thank you very much. Bobby, later, dude.